Jimbo's Garage. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to Jimbo's Garage. Black Stallion has been a longtime channel supporter, and they are headed to Fabtech this September, and I've agreed to build them a project, something that they could take with them and put on display in their booth. So today, we're gonna to be making a bench. Not just your ordinary bench, a heavy duty bench. After all, this is Jimbo's garage and nothing leaves here unless it's designed to last a lifetime. Well, maybe not one lifetime, maybe 10 lifetimes. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let's get started. Today's video is sponsored by King Metals. They've got all your fabrication needs in one location. From hinges to hardware, balusters to metal decor, brass to aluminum, and a whole lot more. You name it, they've got it. Check them out today at kingmetals.com. Now let's get back to today's video. All right, so they gave me this, uh, this uh, idea that I wanted to do this several months ago, and I had plenty of time to think about what I wanted to do, what I wanted to build. And, uh, you know, I couldn't make my mind up. And so finally we got closer to the build time and um, this is what I came up with. I came up with uh, a super heavy duty bench that I thought would be kind of interesting. Didn't really have a game plan. I'm just kind of thinking something in my head. I scratched something on a piece of paper and I'm just kind of going with it. This is some three inch square tube, 120 wall thickness. And this is what we're using for the legs on this right here pretty heavy duty stuff to start out with right here but that's the look I was looking for you know I'm just uh, I knew it was going to be big and heavy and it's just something that uh, that I just wanted to do all right with the four legs cut out now we're moving on to the frame itself this is some two by four rectangular tube also 120 wall thickness and I'm just cutting the frame out <clears throat> and I'm wanting to cut all the pieces out I like to do that I like to cut everything out as much as I can so I have everything all done and I gotta say this is some some pretty big stuff but it's no problem for the evolution and the champion cutoff blade right here this uh that stuff really works really well I've got a lot tons of cuts on this blade right here and it just still <clears throat> excuse me continues to uh and impressed me by cutting through this material. This is some pretty thick material and there was a lot of cuts right here. All right, with everything cut out, over to the welding table here and uh, table dogs in. And the first thing I wanna do is get the frame itself uh, going and I've got everything nice and square there at 90 degrees. One, beauty, one thing <laughs> that I like about working with thicker, heavier duty, more bigger material that I'm not used to. Usually I'm uh, used to f gate frames and, and handrails and stuff that's a lot smaller, a lot thinner. Man, this big stuff is easy to work with. Right here, everything's clamped down and nice and square and ready to go. And I got the HTP Revolution 2500 fired up and we're just gonna get to business here. So the first thing I want to do is tack everything in place all the way around so I know it stays square and now I'm going to weld as much as I can out. <clears throat> now <clears throat> usually I grind my welds down and mostly everything I do but this pro this project right here I decided that I want to uh, leave as much welding exposed as I possibly can uh, just, just give it that rugged look if you will. Except for this right here. Sometimes I get carried away and I'm not thinking about it. And that's got to, you got to remember, you know, just building a project and trying to figure out what you're doing is hard enough. But when you're trying to film something and think about settings and try to figure out if this is a good light, or what angle you need to get on, and then try to build the project, sometimes things get away from you. Uh, here I'm welding on the uh, three inch square flat plate to the bottom of the legs. <clears throat> and, uh, and that's working out pretty good. However, what I ended up doing here at the end is grinding the wells down all the way around this. And that's not what I wanted to do. And uh, at hindsight, I really wish I would have just left those alone and maybe just taken a flat disc to the very bottom to be sure they're flat. And that creates a little, that's gonna create a little bit of a problem for me because now I've I'm gonna take the mill scale off and then you'll see a little bit later on that, uh, that, that, was, a, that was a bit of a problem. All right, there's the four legs. They're welded on and this is what I'm talking about. This is what I wasn't paying attention. This is what I normally do to everything I build. I always weld and then grind this down so I wasn't even thinking that it needed to be any different. 
Although it looks nice and nice and clean, but that's not the look I was looking for on this project. I wanted it a little bit rustic and uh, uh, nevertheless, it's too late and this is what I have to deal with. And now you see I've got that shiny metal of taking the mill scale off um, all the way around and I did that on all four legs. And, and it was a bit of a challenge for me to try to hide that uh, as the project went on, but you will see uh, later on in the project that uh, I was able to um, hide it a little bit with some metal blackening and a combination of paint mixture and that uh, yeah anyways it kind of held it and if I would have never said anything you probably would have never noticed all right well I do have to grind some of it down these welds right here are going to the corners <clears throat> this is where the uh, legs are going to fit right in the corner so I needed to have that nice and flat and those legs are going to fit on just like this now Everything's nice and flat. Got all the dust and debris off my table. Got a couple fab block squares right here. Clamp those down. I know that they're square or plumb in both directions. And then trying to do this to, you know, it was, it was, I spent so much time trying to get everything clamped in, cut pieces to clamp it in and keep everything nice and plumb. That was my idea. You know, I'm just trying to, you know, do what I can to, to do a, a good job, if you will. Everybody wants to do a perfect job. <laughs> Sometimes, all that time gets wasted and it's not that important but uh spent a lot of time doing this making this jig right here and uh in my mind everything was nice and square and, and it was for the most part i mean it was helpful i it, I, it would be really difficult to do this without all this clamp and keeping everything nice and uh, square and plumb It'd be difficult but i just repeated this process here all around on all four legs And you might be able to see that shiny mill scale uh, that I took off on the bottom of those legs. And that, that right there is going to be a problem for me. But uh, I ended up getting it. Ultimately, you'll see a little bit later on. All right, this is the cross support in the very bottom. And again, just trying to get everything just right. I spend way too much time trying to, you know, trying to get everything perfect. Nothing's perfect. And, uh, you know, you can just see, and you'll see as I go along with this. I don't know why I, I just... I try to make everything as good as it, uh, as I possibly can, but eh, there's always, always always a problem. So that was off about a sixteenth of an inch. I couldn't live with it, so I had to cut the tack off, make one little adjustment, just like that, and tack it back in. That's a little bit overkill there. It would have been fine just the way it was, but that's part of my OCD. I just got to have it just right, at least in my mind. All right, with all four legs on, it's the support on the sides. Now it's time for the support across the back side. And this is kind of funny here. Follow along with me if you can. Um, this is part of just trying to be too anal and trying to get everything just right. I spent literally probably an hour doing this, um, bringing in the legs here with a pipe clamp. All right, I'll, you know, be sure that it's in line with the side supports of the legs. Uh, things were off. I'm not kidding you, a sixteenth of an inch. I couldn't deal with it. I had to have it perfect. What am I going to do? Look at me just doing everything back and forth. I was finally happy with that tack right there on that side. <clears throat> not happy there. I've got to get this thing just right. It bugged me. Something that nobody would ever see ever, and it wouldn't affect the build, but I just something that I just can't deal with. It, it just needs to be exactly that's part of my problem, I guess. And at the very end, every project I do is always a problem. <laughs> it's never, it's never perfect. And I think that's the same with everybody. Nobody ever makes anything perfect. Nothing's perfect, but, but I spend so much time doing this. And then look at this. I got a pipe clamp going sideways to some clamps that are on my welding table. And it's wired together with some wire to pull one side in all to, all to gain a 16th, maybe an eighth of an inch. Uh, and anyways, I spent so much time doing this. At the, at the end of the day, I really didn't know if it was perfect or not, but uh, it was good enough. Sometimes you just get carried away. All right, everything is all put on and everything is uh, tacked in, and so now it's time to start welding everything out. One thing I want to point out uh, too is you might see see in the metal the black seam line uh, there on that uh, cross support there. Now that's on all of it. It's on all the square tube, all the rectangular tube. Now because this is something that um, I'm going to leave exposed, 
um, I did not want that seam line to be seen. So uh, I took all the seam lines, put them all to the inside. You can see that one here. On, uh, you can see that one there on the inside and all, all the other ones, everything to the back or to the bottom. So when this bench is upright and you're looking at it straight on, you're not seeing any seam lines there since this is all going to be uh, natural metal. And the only thing I'm going to do is put a clear coat on this. Well, you can see if you look at those legs, I did a little bit of work to try to conceal that shiny um, area where I took the mill scale off. And, and it's a little bit better at this point right here. Um, at least you don't see the shininess. And I, I did my work right there with the blackening, like I said, and a little bit of paint mixture. And I kind of cleaned it up. And as soon as that clear gets on there, uh, you're not going to be able to see that. A lot of welding right here and I am taking my time a lot of these welds are going to be seen and I'm not grinding them down so I'm trying to do the best I can to make it look good at this point this bench is somewhere around 150 pounds and it's not really easy to maneuver around so I'm having to get up on top of it right here and uh, get comfortable uh, to you know give it some good welds all right this is some angle iron now i originally my original plan right here <clears throat> uh, was to insert some wood in the top for the bench in the little end table part right there and i've had some leftover tiger wood from a project i thought it was good and this is i thought that's what i was going to use tongue and groove tiger, tiger wood that was my original thought it would have been nice but i came up with a little bit different of an idea as i went along but i planned for this right here and you can see it's nice and flush and that's all tongue and groove that would have fit in there really nice and I'll make a little bit of a change <clears throat> all right it's on to the backrest right now and uh, you know the backrest here what I don't want to have a perfect uh, you know 90 degrees off the back I want to put a little cant to it so I think I got like five degrees on this you can see that's what I'm cutting right there and that's just gonna you know most chairs um, or benches uh, that you see are slightly canted to the back and that's what I'm doing right here um, and I'm cutting all the pieces out I need for this mind you this stuff's not cheap and uh, I'm just utilizing all the stuff that I have left over I bought just enough to do the project no mistakes had to be made here and I just used just about everything I possibly could uh, there was very little scrap left you can see right here this is something that i had left over and i'm utilizing this piece it was just going to be long enough to get what i needed to get all right with everything all cut out it's time for the assembly for the backrest right here again on my welding table i'm going to clamp everything down get everything right where it needs to be that's the beauty of having a welding table like this man it makes fabrication so much easier and so much nicer i know everybody can't have one but uh, man i'm telling you what if you're in business if you, if you are a fabricator or you're starting your business it's going to be a fabricator this should be one of the main tools that you should you should have because it definitely is a lifesaver all right checking for square i'm happy with this here after a couple of adjustments be sure everything where it needs to be because it's got to fit right, right in its place. I think I'm, I think I'm finally happy with it. Nope. One more time. All right. So if you tack everything like this in place, uh, double check everything before you weld it all out. And you generally, um, you know, it's not going to go anywhere. And uh, you can see right there, I've got it tacked. And one more time, I want to check. Be sure nothing moved around. I want to be sure everything stayed square. And it did. Now it's time to start going. I'm going to leave those clamps in place until I get as much of this welded out as I possibly can. Um, and then I'm going to remove the clamps. Again, uh, yeah, I'm trying to take my time. I'm trying to get a little nice. I'm trying to get some nice welds in here. This is all going to be exposed and seen. There'll be thousands of people looking at this thing and I'm going to get criticized anyway. It doesn't really matter, but I'm just trying to do the best I can. And you can see those seam lines again at the back. This is the back of the backrest, so I've got everything going out the back. Just something to consider. All right, check this out. My table crane. 
uh, even though this uh, really wasn't that heavy, maybe 60, 60 pounds or so, but it is on an angle, and there would be no way I'd be able to hold this angle just right and weld in place. I am by myself. This crane worked out perfectly. I got it to where it's going to hold it right where it needs to be. And it's not, that crane is, <laughs> it's not something you use every day. But uh, you know what? Um, I do use it enough to warrant it being there. And if I had to take it off, like I said, it's really easy. Just four screws and it just lifts right off. But uh, uh, that's a good little addition to the shop for me. Yeah, my head is in the way. You know, sometimes you get carried away. You don't know where the camera is. All right, well, this is a little addition here. Uh, this is the filler infill, I should say, to the backrest. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm cutting out the Black Stallion logo. Um, again, this is something that uh, I just thought about as I'm building it. You know, it would be nice to be able to have something that would uh, uh, have their logo on it. And this was a good, good place, a good opportunity to put something in. And uh, we just uh, designed it on the plasma table. <clears throat> and just going to cut it out you know plasma tables are nice to have these uh it's a nice little addition to the shop right here do cool stuff like this um again it's pretty nice this company here is no longer in business uh but it's uh this uh, machine has served me well i've had it for about five years now and um, still works good and just like that nice job cut out right to size all right, so I just got uh, a flap disc here. This is like a, <clears throat> a 120 grit. And I'm not trying to, all I'm trying to do is take the dross off. That's all I'm trying to do. Uh, I'm not, I don't want to take any of the mill scale off, so I'm not grinding uh, too hard. It's just enough to clean up the front and the back side. All right, and then this thing is going to fit right inside, just like this. And I'm happy with the way that fits in there perfect and we're going to get this thing welded in here now this is something that i <clears throat> i didn't know what to do i didn't want to weld it all the way around that's just too much heat putting in there and things might warp around <clears throat> and i didn't want to just uh give it to stitch welds every um you know inch or two or, or whatever so what i decided to do is uh just these little <clears throat> bullet bump tacks if you will now, about every three inch apart and it just kind of added a little bit of a you know rusticness to it to the look and that's kind of what i was looking for and really happy with that that uh, turned out pretty good not putting a lot of heat in there so nothing's going to warp around all right the armrest so i fought with this armrest deal i didn't I, I tried to decide whether i wanted to put one on both sides or if i just wanted to have one in the in, on this side right here that would separate the uh the little end table on the end of the bench right there but I fought with this. This is another thing that just drove me crazy. You can see that I can't seem to get it uh, level. So ratchet straps, clamps, everything I can to get it uh, to get it level. Because it is important. That might be something that if it wasn't, that might be something that might be seen uh, if it was out of level. Spent a lot of time trying to get that thing right where it needs to be. And there it is. However, if you look real close... You'll see it move slightly right there. It moved, oh, maybe an eighth. I don't know. And not much, but uh, nevertheless, it's something that uh, that you're not never going to be able to see. And then welding this thing, you know, um, overdid everything. But it's all part of the look. You know, you don't, don't need to weld that much onto this. But it, like I said, it is, it's part of the look I was looking for. And uh, you can see this right here. I didn't need to weld this thing all the way down. But I thought, you know what? It's going to look cool. And I, and I want to fill that gap, and so that's what I elected to do. That and the same thing on the back. And this is starting to come together. All right, so I decided at the last minute I wanted to put a light strip on the inside. It's kind of illuminate uh, when the back goes on. Um, and then I wanted to put a couple logos on. So I cut out a couple of logos and I uh, welded those onto each front corner of the bench. <clears throat> Just to give it a little added touch. And then this is the back plate right here. And I'm test fitting it right now. I uh, drilled and tapped a couple of holes and I'm just bringing this in and liking the way everything is. So now I'm going to go ahead and drill and tap uh, the rest of the screws. The reason why I'm doing this is, 
in case they need to service the light in the back, I didn't want to weld this back panel on in case something went wrong and they couldn't get to uh, the lights or something. Who knows what? Uh, I just wanted to make it removable. And uh, I thought this is the way to do it here. So I've got this little, I got this little tap deal. Uh, I got it at KBC Tools, and I don't know the name of it, but it comes in a kit. And uh, I think it's like 5 16 3 eighths, half inch, quarter inch. I think that, uh, but man, these things, look at this, how cool this thing is. You just, uh, you drill a hole and then uh, this little tap right here, pretty cool. Put it in the end of your drill on a socket and it's just in and out and it's perfect. Man, this is a pretty cool deal. Uh, I got that, at, like I said, KBC Tools. I really like that. That's a good setup. Quick and easy and it's got all the standard taps to it. All right, just test fit and everything. Be sure everything is fitting real good. And then I added some yellow plastic to the back to give it that accent. And, uh, you know, so highlight it. Uh, black stallion colors are black and yellow. And I thought by putting that plastic in there, it might uh, it might enhance the look of the back with the, with the light illuminating it. I'll show you what that looks like here in just a second. And light off, light on. That turned out pretty cool. I'm pretty happy with that. All right, this is just some clear, and this was the final the final uh, spray down right here. I'm just getting the clear on there. We don't want this thing to rust, or I don't want any kind of corrosion on it. Uh, so I just sprayed everything down with clear. That little light thing I talked about, I didn't I didn't film it, but uh, the way that worked is I drilled a hole in the side of the backrest on the inside of the tube. And then went down to the bottom and drilled a hole through the bottom of the frame. And I've got the wires coming out the very bottom. You can see I got them taped up with some blue tape right there. I actually have a little um, holder on the bottom. You must, I'll show you. I'll point that out a little bit later on. The battery pack for this is about an inch thick, about three inches wide, and about six inches long. And I've got that concealed underneath there. All right, so this is uh, the uh, end table part of the bench, if you will. This is, I'm going to be using that tiger wood for this right here. And a whole bunch of screws. Uh, overkill again. You know, I, I just, I'm using two screws on either side for both planks. I just didn't want any chance of these things warping or anything. I know it's such a small area, but again, it's just part of my craziness uh, to overbuild everything. And then uh, this right here, you can see I'm just drilling a few holes all the way around because I changed my mind on this part. And you'll see that here in a little bit. And I decided to do something a little bit different. All right. There's the end table going in. I happen to have some black screws, three-quarter inch, which were perfect for this right here. And an important thing, learn the hard way pre-drill um, i did not pre-drill the very first one and of course it split and i had to replace that uh, that board and so i've pre-drilled now all of these holes and then everything worked out good you can see that little holder right there over my shoulder that is on the underneath side that's what holds the battery pack and the wires come right out the bottom and then go right into that battery pack that's that uh, you can put inside there all right well here's the seat right here i started with a piece of three-quarter plywood and this is what I ended up with right here. Uh, variation of welding jackets, all sewn together. And I thought that was a pretty cool touch. All the logos up front. This was a great project. This will be going to Fabtech this year. I think September 11th through the 16th in 2023. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you on the next one. See you next time on Jimbo's Garage.